Comcast. Of course, we will send these 44 seconds of unnecessary logos, even though they are likely the only thing that will make sense for the next two hours. Mom, Mom, Uncle Jonas is here. No, it's not Tuesday today. Does your son usually say Uncle Jonas is here when he's not? Otherwise, your incredulity is pure dickish nonsense. On what date did the Norwegian Parliament hold its first election since the war? August 12th, 1945. Homeschooling in Norway sucks. When you buy a house like this, you always make sure the master bedroom has an inside peeping window. Uncle Jonas apparently has a sixth sense, since zero sound was made, and he would therefore have no reason to assume the perv kid was spying on them. No! So this piece of human refuse comes over, runs through the Robert's rules of abusing people, and you're yelling at him to stay? I have a better response, and it involves four middle fingers. Well, six, if you count the snowman. I'm getting the distinct feeling the Norwegian Tourism Board was not consulted during this film. The movie gives you an early warning of its intentions, with the sound of the main character snoring over the opening credits. Has no one in Norway heard of gloves? First the kid made a snowman without them, and now our protagonist slept outside without them. They have been invented here, right? The snowman? You're being too modest. This is clearly the greatest snowman. And it's the true story of P.T. Barnum's serial killer phase. How do you f*** up a title? Jeez. <laughs> Dark brooding alcoholic antihero wakes up on a public bench with a hangover cliche. Also, replace the sunniness of LA with the snowiness of Oslo and a Smith with a fastbender, but damn, this opening feels very Hancockian. Also, also, assuming Harry spent most of the night here and I see no evidence of a heater, he should be, if not dead, severely frostbitten. I swear I'm gonna catch my death in pneumonia just by watching this movie as well as at least three VDs, I'm guessing. If there is one thing these statues make clear, it's that the White Witch has taken up residency in Norway, and I'm guessing Aslan ain't coming. Come to Oslo, where you and your family can spend a nice day in the park and have a picnic right by the statue depicting the Great Circle Jerk of 1864. And when we say based, just so we're clear, we mean it has a couple of the same character names, but we changed pretty much everything else and left out anything that would in any way make this a coherent storyline, right? There are so many reactions like this in the movie to absolutely nothing, it's as if every character woke up this morning and were told they were going to be in a thriller today. This guy keeps his gun next to his classic Sex Pistols album. In this household, Harry believes in gun storage that is both unsafe and poetic. Where exactly did this guy come from? Harry had to pass the kitchen to get to the point he's at currently. And yes, Hazmat Man is not in the previous shot, but in the time it takes Harry to walk to get the gun and turn around, surely he would have noticed Harry at the very least. Harry Ho! Yep, that's right, the protagonist's name is Harry freaking Hole. Harry Hole? Was the author just browsing his 1970s porn collection when it came to him? How am I supposed to take any of this seriously? Also, in Norway, Harry's last name would be pronounced as Holy. But since Americans are stupid, movie decides to make Harry's name sound more fitting for porn. Mind you, Harry Holy is a dumb as f name as well. Does this guy not see Harry with a gun in his hand? Or is this how people greet each other in Norway? Just like in real life, when you see someone you know, you stare at them as the camera cuts back and forth for a full 10 seconds, just so everything stays perfectly ominous. The EviSync will automatically upload all the new data to the central police server here every 12 hours. In a movie that lacks anything resembling a linear or cohesive storyline, let's be sure to make a point to explain what version of software the police are using for their tablets. Also, the EviSync? What is this nonsense? Why would it need 12 hours to sync? There are modern cells in this movie, right? Why would these giant iPad wannabes with such a horrible refresh rate even be used by a modern police force? I'd like to put $100 down on later forced plot point, thanks. A leave of absence has to be formally requested in writing. Between this and the Evasync seminar we just sat through, this movie is starting to feel more like an admin instructional video on the inner workings of the Oslo Police Department. And that might have been a more interesting film. Norwegian serial killer would be great at writing cinema sins. You scared my clients away. I'm guessing Raquel's infidelity-laced art-selling strategy didn't help matters. Not to belabor the dangers of sleeping outside when it's below freezing, but here he's literally sleeping in the snow. This arm should have been amputated long ago. Who hit me with a snowball? Who cares? I got the promotion over Sylvie and Morton wants to marry me, so I can forget about a mysterious snowball faster than it takes to melt one in hell. Where's Sylvie's going, goddammit? Assuming the killer is the one who hit this woman with a snowball, how in the f*** did he get back in his car without her seeing him? Am I going to create a ton of sins from this phone exchange? Yes, I am. First off, this girl picks up her phone because it beeped. But why did the phone beep? She was the last person to write anything in this exchange. That series of face screaming and fear emojis are on her side of the conversation. Also, the I miss you text that she's about to send is already on the phone in this shot, but disappears in the next one as she goes to write it. Furthermore, the I miss you text is back on the screen before she even sends it. Movie might promote brutal serial killings, but it does not abide texting and driving. For the record, I'm not sure stopping in the middle of the road to text is that much safer. Even if it is just an excuse to let the killer pass, which will have zero impact on future events anyway. If you want to silently roll credits after this exchange, I would not have a problem with that. This girl's mom is terrible at taking pictures of snowmen. Why selfie this sh**? 
You're hogging the snowman's frame, woman. This long, lingering look at her husband tries to make it seem like he might be the killer. But it's so ridiculously obvious he isn't, he might as well be played by Tom Hanks. It's a good thing no one ever uses blinds or curtains in this film, because our poor killer wouldn't be able to spy on them properly and know when best to strike. I'm Katrina Bratt. Harry Hall. How dare you, sir? Oh, wait, are you saying that's your name? This is a common thing in Norway, the inside window. You guys have built up a level of trust in which I am totally jealous and going to give a sin for because I don't trust what I'm seeing. Mommy? <laughs> this movie and it's going back and forth. The little girl's mom probably got killed, and it's probably the most interesting part of the movie so far. But instead, we're going back to sleepy Michael Fassbender and his never-ending melancholy. People playing ping pong is an apt symbol of this movie's editing. Can't believe Thelma Schoonmaker did this thing. So this machine is called an Evisync. Previously on Evisync. Well, I saw Josephine in the garden in her pajamas, and uh, I thought, what is she doing out in this cold? Considering the clothing, or lack thereof, already seen this film, light pajamas in the freezing snow make as much sense as anything else. And she said she couldn't find her mother. I feel like half this movie was shot outside of windows. You can't hear most of the dialogue in these shots, although the subtitles are handy, I suppose. But what about when you're at the theater? Oh good, article about important character later in the film is conveniently found in Katrine's glove box. How, um, convenient. Okay, cool. Now they're in Bergen. Nine years earlier! Oh Christ! Also, have we gone back to a time when people act like normal human beings and don't just stare at each other ominously before making every action seem too deliberate and creepy? Nope, guess not. I, uh... Checked her credit card bills. She'd been to see a pregnancy doctor. Who says pregnancy doctor? Was he located next door to the teeth doctor? Or the boo-boo treating doctor? Movie makes it seem as if Harry is having a memory of an event that took place nine years ago that he has no knowledge of. This is when Harry realizes, maybe I should have paid a little more attention to that letter where someone said they were going to kill someone else. Nah, the drawing doesn't look anything like this. Also, glad I kept this strange senseless snowman letter right nearby for this very moment, even though it really meant nothing to me. You want a coffee or something? We are 30 minutes into this frosty the snooze fest and we still basically know nothing about anything. Never has a movie taken so long to tell you so little. Here's an extra 10 sins for the sheer boredom. This guy just leaves his orange juice out all day. If he doesn't get frostbite from sleeping outside, he's going to get E. coli from the spoiled OJ. F***ing White Walkers. Uh, it gets worse. Rafto just arrived. Perfect. The drunk and the half-wit. Rafto somehow knew to walk up to Svensson right as the other officers were talking shit about him. Also, were the other officers not aware that either Rafto or Svensson could have a walkie-talkie tuned to the channel that they are all clearly on? Cold case. <laughs> ah, cold case. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. Not sure who wrote this SNL skit, but bravo. I think it's the falling snow that sets the killer off. I'll give this movie this. It's the first film I know of where the motive is snow porn. <laughs> Damn it! If this movie cuts away from what is interesting one more time, I will become the snowman myself. Or Val Kilmer. Whichever is scarier. Why the f*** is this kid pulling off his mask during the middle of the hockey game? Hi Harry, good to see you. Sorry I'm late, honey. I was busy killing women and building snowmen that have sh to do with anything. This kid shoots the puck. It pleases Michael Fassbender for some reason, and game is over. The hockey game on the roof in Clerks was better than this sh And some asshole in the middle of that game launched the ball they were using down the street. All she cares about is you. That's why she dumped me. I'm such a bad influence. But she still lets me take you out by myself all the time. <laughs> People paid money to see this. Also, this is a perfectly plausible response to having to sit through half of this movie. Harry, there's another missing woman in Galo this time. Okay, so Harry gets a call from Katrine about a new missing woman. And at about the 40 minute mark, you'd think that would finally mean this movie's gonna get into the mystery and stop worrying about Harry's hockey game and concert attendance. Instead, the movie takes us to his ex-girlfriend's place so he can drop off Oleg, and then Harry says this. Take me home. We'll go in the morning. So f me, we have to go back to Harry's house with a pill bottle in his hand rather than a simple fast forwarding to the morning. Get on with it already, movie. You have very little time left to snowman. Also, why was it so important for Katrine to come get Harry and interrupt his semi-father-son outing if they were just gonna go check on the missing woman in the morning? Does Fassbender have no shame? Who reported her missing? Her husband last night. Sure, why have this conversation last night when you can simply do it in the morning while the movie wastes even more time? Her husband asked specifically for Inspector Hole. Inspector Hole? I hardly even know. Oh, never mind. My man, a Peterson. So is my sister, my twins. And despite the fact that I'm at the house where my sister was just murdered, I somehow don't know she's been murdered. Oh, by the way, this murder and the twin connection and the fact that I'm being played by Chloe Seveny is totally immaterial to the rest of the movie. Also, how is Anne even here? Clearly the line about Sylvia's husband going to pick up the sister was bullshit, since after Harry and Katrine leave, Sylvia calls her husband and tells him to stop calling her and showing up. So how did Anne just happen to show up? And how could they have been gone longer than an hour, and why is it f***ing nighttime? So our killer was able to find this place, shimmy down, make a snowman, put a human head on it, and get out in just a few minutes. But the experts are still trying to rappel down there? I guess you can limit your search to snow ninjas then. I guess after this, we're gonna have to call her Chloe Seventy. She wasn't sure who the father was. She got rid of the baby a few weeks ago. We get it, the killer is killing women who he feels are immoral. We've gotten that since the opening suicide by Ice Car. 
but you've yet to do anything to actually drop clues or hints or even red herrings about who this might be or why we would care. You forgot to put in any mystery into your murder mystery so far. So here's another 15 sins to think about what you've done. So after finding her head, the only natural place to go after that is a black tie ice skating party. It's definitely time to talk to J.K. Simmons now, because after all, we've seen his picture twice in this movie. Once in this newspaper, and another time in this magazine from the nine years ago Val Kilmer part of the story. Have Katrine and Harry even talked about this guy yet? Wait, isn't that the same song as was playing in the most recent victim's home? I'm barely paying attention anymore, and I recognize that. So how does he not question this guy? And why does none of this even matter? Does this guy just live in the neighborhood? What are the chances of him being here as Matthias walks past him in the suit? Also, this guy sees someone in a hazmat suit and thinks, that guy must be impersonating me. I better say something. Also, also, Mold Man and the Snowman. I see a three-picture franchise and a Netflix series. Her head washed ashore near Arendelle. Wait, Arendelle? Like, from Frozen? I knew Olaf had a dark side, but yikes. Magnus, get me the list. What list? The list of doctors at the Gellion. Oh yes, of course. That's what he meant by the list. It's so obvious when you think about it. How did you know Sylvie Otterson was pregnant? Eat our bed, listen. And we have our first suspect. Granted, most murder mysteries provide a couple of those in the first 30 minutes or so, but not the snowman. Nope, too much important staring into blizzards to think about suspects until now. Painted toenails! This is important because, oh right, nothing means anything in this godforsaken wasteland of a movie. Despite not being the murderer, Dr. Vetlison has a serial killer collage on his wall. They really can't just say Olympics? And even if they can't, couldn't come up with something better than Winter Sports World Cup? Attending a three-day conference on bioidentical hormone restoration. I thought you were a plastic surgeon. Well, you know... Cosmetic surgery needs to move with the times, too. I'm working on this process where I can give a woman the body of a snowman. Also, seriously, does Harry not find it remotely odd that Matthias just happens to be on this train at this time? I look at this picture now, I see Layla staring at him. Now? How could you not see that before? It's in the middle of the goddamn picture. She's not even pretending to look straight. Matthias is not a police officer. How would he have any clue they would still be tracking the phone, or even if they were, how quickly they could get to the location? Why is everything in this world so suspicious? It's a ringing phone! In his own garage. I'm not gonna lie, the last 20 minutes of this movie has been so nonsensical and boring, I'm not even sure where to start. Kilmer blew his head off, except he didn't. It was the snowman guy. But then Magneto's detective friend, who was apparently old Kilmer guy's daughter, followed a phone to another house where the doctor blew their head off. And now the bossy guy from Whiplash is surprised, and I'm not sure any of it actually means anything, or if I've just lost all feeling in my extremities, including my brain. We found two bodies in the house and Berta Becker's phone. It was a suicide. Case closed. Detective Boss sees circumstantial evidence and declares the big case not to be such a big case after all, and probably can't be convinced otherwise because the lead detective is a drunk who lost all his credibility cliché. Also, being a serial killer in Norway must be so boring. The police don't even try to investigate these crimes. No wonder Matthias sends cute notes to the cops. Can I keep this? No. Can I keep this? Yeah, sure. After all, you made a real convincing argument. Just what the f Movie? I mean, why? Why did he call you Cloudberry? That's a good question. He seemed like a guy who would be more partial to calling someone Huckleberry. The most interesting character trait in this entire film might be how opposed Harry is to Beds. Well guys, we're about 25 minutes away from the end of this movie, and we have absolutely no leads into who the killer is. But we do have time for Raquel and Harry nostalgically dry humping. We've seen now that phones definitely exist in this universe. Why on earth would this giant Evasync nonsense be a better way to capture offending video? Hello? Hello? Katrine clearly noticed that someone turned off all the lights in the room while she was in the bathroom, and her decision, instead of checking on who did that, was to just get in the bed and watch some TV. And then she acts surprised when she realizes someone else is in the room. How exactly did Matthias get up to this room this quickly after getting off the phone with Raquel? How did he even get in the room? That the 15th Winter Sports <gasps> World Cup has been awarded to Oslo. So glad they wrapped up the World Cup storyline that had absolutely zero bearing on any part of the movie. Doesn't even give the killer motive if, say, it was Stope. Wouldn't it have been easier and less messy to just bring the tablet over to Katrine's body to get in, as opposed to chopping her finger off? Also, how does Matthias know sh about this tablet? Or that it's fingerprint encoded? Doesn't this movie make a sh ton more sense if a police officer is doing the crime? It's not like if it wasn't Matthias, the movie wouldn't work. At least, as much as it works in its current form. How do you make an imprint of a snowman this pristine on the top of a car without disturbing the other snow around it? Did this mother rent a crane so he could drop a trash can lid and a bowling ball on the roof to make this thing? You gotta admire the dedication and stealth of this asshole. He killed Katrine in a hotel where there's a huge celebration going on, managed to somehow get her body out of that hotel without anyone seeing it, drove her here, positioned her just so, made a snowman imprint on the top of the car so that Harry would see it, and managed to do that without one witness. Okay, fine, another dead, which would be fine if you had left any breadcrumbs to follow or clues to parse, but this whole affair just feels like someone scratched a bunch of names on a notepad and is waiting until the two hours is up to circle the person who did it. Ah! 
Ah! Amateur jump scare from a child is amateur and childish. Darling, go back inside. I'll come in in a minute, okay? Did she hear that through the glass, the hood of her jacket, the cap, and her hair? It was never about you. And there it is. It's the ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend. Except there has been literally nothing in this movie that would lead us to believe that's even a possibility up until this point. Matthias's digital photo frame is conveniently on the picture of Katrine outside Raquel's apartment when Harry looks at it. Furthermore, since Harry already knows Matthias is the killer, with his victim dossier spread out all over the table, this ridiculous picture being here is even more ridiculous. Magnus, track Raquel's phone. Why wouldn't he just turn Raquel's phone off? I didn't think you'd find me. Perhaps the pills helped after all. That and leaving Raquel's cell phone on so the police could track you. Why did you abandon them? Why is Matthias giving Harry a chance to save Raquel and Oleg? He didn't think Harry would find him, so it looks like he planned on killing them if Harry didn't show up. But now that he has, suddenly he needs to teach a lesson? Also, while we're at it, let's talk about the snowman's plan. Nine years ago, he killed a woman because she was going to have an abortion for a child that was not her husband's. Apparently, this was the only woman he ever ran across in his entire history that sparked his snowman rage. He killed Val Kilmer when he got too close, then he stopped killing altogether. Until nine years later, when he started killing again for reasons unknown. Like, why did he kill Britta Bishop? She loved her child and never once tried to abandon her which is the ultimate reason this movie is giving for the murders. Trying to kill Raquel makes no sense for the same reasons. Killing first Chloe Seveny follows the pattern, because she was going to have an abortion, even though the introduction of second Chloe Seveny made no sense. I guess what I'm saying here is that the most ridiculous scene in the movie is the only thing that actually makes sense. Why don't you ask him? Okay, wait a second. What just happened here? There's no way to tell at a regular speed, so let's break it down. Fassbender somehow communicates to the kid to kick his chair back when the guy looks that way. This somehow gives him the ability to reach out and, what, get a finger in there? How does this help? That thing can easily chop off a head, and I doubt an extra finger makes a difference. I'm ready! I'm here! Come on! <laughs> what a dumbass. Come on, this guy's native Norwegian. What a rookie mistake. I'm from Tennessee, and I wouldn't this up. Also, deus ice machina. Also, why was Matthias even walking closer to Harry? He could have shot him easily from where he was standing. Pathologists can't determine what kind of weapon was used. And he's never seen anything like it. I'll take it. Obvious sequel is obviously not going to be made. Also, based on the last hour and 54 minutes I just suffered through, I'm willing to bet that I'll take it is what Fassbender says after every script he reads. I don't like you because you're dangerous. That's right. Nice, man. I am dangerous. Which is why the biggest challenge of IBS is educating the public. Afflicts over two million people, yet most of us have never heard of it. And it strikes without regard to age, gender, or race. My family owned all of these buildings. I remember when this was all farmland as far as the eye could see. Old man Peabody owned all of this. He had this crazy idea about breeding pine trees. What am I going to say? I killed the president of Paraguay with a fork. How have you been? Watch me. I'll do the fingering. Do you want to build a snowman? Is he grumpy often? Joey, you like movies about gladiators? 
Maybe this will bring your balls back. Where are my testicles, Summer? Hello, Mr. Donkey. Swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the box? Hey, that's not the wallet, Inspector. <laughs>